This video is designed to help you stay focused on what you've got to get done while I support and motivate you. We'll utilize a Pomodoro session to keep you on track while we're together. It's about 45 minutes long and I'll keep you updated on time so that you can stay focused, you'll avoid distractions, and you'll accomplish what you set out to during our time together. It's actually a peek into our current workshop exclusive for Inner Circle Peeps. It's called The Princess Project and this is just one of the sessions. Let me know if you want to learn more and I'll have a link in the description box. We're going to have the mentality that we are a princess so you can be a fictional princess if you want to whatever your favorite disney princess is maybe or you can be like princess Di if you want to right you can you can decide who you want to be all right you can be totally imaginary but what you want to do is you want to step in those princess shoes and every time you're going to declutter something you're going to say to yourself would a princess keep this? If I was a princess, would I keep this? So we're going to go on more and I'm going to talk about it. We're going to do a Pomodoro session. The version that we're going to do is a 30 minute Pomodoro session. I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and you're going to move ahead doing something at home. Now I'm going to talk about decluttering. So if you want to, you can decide each time we get together on these live meetings or if you hit go into the record recording of it that you're going to say all right i'm going to i'm going to declutter while we're together because it's the theme for the month but mainly it's about getting your mindset to a point where you really let go of things and you don't you don't struggle with stuff anymore and so we will go 30 minutes and then a 10 minute break where you'll come back and we'll report and then we'll start again okay so I'm setting the timer for 30 minutes. There I go. So get started, okay? And set an attention. Put in the chat what you ch you plan to do today. And if you're watching this on replay and you're not here with me live and you're on Facebook, go on Facebook and say, this is what I'm doing now. Here's my intention. Um, somebody just did this, Deborah did this last week. And I joined her and I said, she said, it was, I'm in my zone because last month was zones we did. And she said, I am in my zone. And uh, my intention is my bedroom and my bedrooms happen to be that zone too. And I jumped in and I said, I'm doing it too. So it was fun. And so you can do that or you can reply to any of the Friday, you know, the latest Friday email that you got from me on checking in. And you could, you could just click on that because what we want to do is we want to have that endorphin thing going where it's feel good. Cause you know how we are. We're that feel good kind of person where we need things to feel good for us to do stuff. If we don't feel good, we say, oh, you know how I feel, I don't wanna. So we set a trap for ourselves to feel good and move and do something. So if you go to an email, if you're not on Facebook, you hit reply to Friday and you say, Kathy, I'm just here checking in. I'm working on, I'm watching a recording of um, the decluttering like a princess and here's what I'm doing while I'm watching your recording. See what I mean? All right? All right, so what if you were a princess so we're going to talk about this okay what if you were a princess do you think that you would struggle over a chipped mug would you struggle keeping an outfit that is outdated like i had a client one time that had an entire closet now she had a pretty big home and one of the closets that she had never was opened never opened that closet door and it had all of her power suits from the 80s in there. She was an attorney who now did pro bono work for a family. She was basically worked on um, on a donation basis, really. She was just, um, she was a stay-at-home mom at this point. And at one time, though, she was a litigator. And so she had these really amazing suits. But no, first of all, there are two things there. One was most people would not want the suits that she had so there was that because they were so outdated you know like the big um shoulders you know those shoulders that there were in the 80s and then the other thing was that there were some very classic suits that she had she did have some very very classic suits that she was never going to wear again and there they were in a closet just sitting there for years and years and years if she was a princess 
Would she keep those suits? You have to elevate your thinking here for a second, okay? Because, you know, part of our, our, the way we think, all right, part of the way we think is a lot of, but it's good, but I should keep it. But, all right, or what's the difference? So what if I was a princess? I wouldn't care about that closet. And here's the thing. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. The princess in you would not want that kind of energy in her life. She's too good for that. She's too elevated for that. She understands her value and she wouldn't want that kind of energy or thing or something in her home. So I want you to look at things in that perspective. I really do think it will help you to let go of things much easier. And I'll talk about a conversation I had with Donna recently. Um, before we do, I'm going to get into just the de-junking supplies that you need if you're going to de-junk. Now, this is something, de-junk and declutter is the same thing. This is something that if you are like, you know, a real student, a real tidy tutor student, then this will eventually become totally a no-brainer. You will just have these things, you know, and I'm, I don't mean that you have to have, you know, you, you have to have all these boxes, you have, but you just know what you need. And so when I have to go about a de-junking job or a decluttering job, it's very simple. And depending on where you live in the world, because here in New Jersey, they just made a law that you can't have plastic bags. I guess it's been a year now. So you have to have these, you know, um, these reusable bags. And most of these reusable bags stand up beautifully and they're big. So you could use those. And those are great because if you're going to use those for de-junking, they fold up really nicely. Um, if you don't have them, these are really good to get from, say, like a Marshalls or any of those stores. Like, they usually have their own bags. If you go to a craft store, um, I did this a couple years ago where I bought, they had these, like, reusable bags, but not for shopping. For, I don't know why they, what they were, really why they had them or what the purpose of them were, but they were quite large, like, really quite large. And I bought them because I had to travel from, a, you know, where I lived to my kid's house with a lot of gifts. And I said, these are great. They look Christmassy. You know, they had like Santa Claus or whatever on them and all that. They look Christmassy. They fold up great. And I fit a lot of gifts in there. And then I found, well, these would actually be really great for de-junking. So you just want to have certain containers to sort through what you're doing. Because let me tell you. I'm actually in a home right now, a place right now that there's a lot of clutter and we've gotten through a lot of it. And it's been a long time that I've gone through, gone, gone, I've been in this position where there's so much to do. And I love that I know what I'm doing. I love that I don't leave the room with stuff. Sometimes like as I was doing it, I was like, man, this is great. You know, even if I didn't have a container with me where I was gathering things to move out of the other room and I would just have a little pile. Like, it's so nice to know what you're doing. This really does work. A lot of people that I even one-on-one -on -one, um, do one-on-one -on -one coaching with, it takes a little while for some people to just release themselves from doing it their way, where they finally will just surrender to the tidy tutor and move ahead and just do what it is that I say. You know what I mean? I mean, it sounds hysterical, but just like, just do what I say. It really works. I know what I'm talking about. And then before you know it, it's like, holy mackerel, she was right. So the things that you need to de-junk, we're just going to go over it really quickly, just so that you, this is something that will become, if it hasn't already, will become just second nature to you so that it's just easy. You don't really ever have to think about it. If you haven't set an intention yet, please set the intention, okay? Do what you need to do so that you get started, okay? Get up, get moving, get started, do something. If you're not going to declutter right now, that's okay. If you're working on your morning routine, you're working on your afternoon routine, you're making dinner, whatever it is, that's fine, all right? Just you want to be productive, okay? All right, so here are the things you need. A timer, five boxes. One of them should be an apple box, large and, or, and tall plastic garbage bags. It really should say large or tall, but some most people need both. A shoe box pen and a, and a three by five scratch pad jar or can and i tell you to start collecting apple boxes but if you apple boxes are for storage 
if you live in a place where you cannot use cardboard boxes for storage because you have um, like a moisture problem or a mouse problem, then you're going to want to get bins so you can start doing that. Purpose of all these things is that we'll, it'll keep us focused on the work we've committed to and it makes it so that we won't take out more than we can put back. It also makes it so that there won't be a mess when you're done and allows us to continue working easily after we're done and when we want to resume the work, it's easy to begin. Now, having these things in place when the house is a wreck is really essential. You can make do with, like I said before, just like a pile of things to move into another room. Um, maybe even not a shoebox down the road when you've got it all together and you're just cleaning up because this is the way organized people clean up. I've watched my sister do it. Um, my sister Maria, who's like super, super organized, her home is always company ready. She's never 15 minutes from company. She's like, bam, you know what I mean? Like, just come on over. And when she straightens up a room, she just gathers things that go in another room and she usually makes a little pile, you know, like on, on, a, on a chair, not usually always. She'll make a little pile on a chair before she, you know, disperses. So you want a kitchen garbage bag and recycling container. You want five containers. You want one that's put away in another room in the house. Giveaway cell, don't know what to do with this. Papers box and a storage box. We get really into this in detail in the Tidy Tutor Masterclass, exactly how to declutter and what all of these things are used for. And then also we have, oh God help me. We have a daily routine workshop that you might also like. And that is, I believe, I don't know if it's called Dunning-Kruger. Oh, I know, it's called the Goal Getting Workshop is what it's called. And we went into how to create a goal, how to actually reach a goal, and then we made the goal daily routine. Because that, without your daily routine, really it's almost impossible to succeed. So these are also things that you need for decluttering, just really quickly, a jar or a can for change, a shoebox, or you could use like one of those leftover containers. You want to use something like notes or an Evernote, something digital where you can keep notes, or a little three by five scratch pad and a pen, okay? I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we're gonna talk, okay? And then we'll move on. I'll tell you how much time we have. We have 15 minutes. So we've been together for 15 minutes. And so you've been working for 15 minutes. You've got 15 minutes to go before we either take a break or just, you know, 30 minutes has passed, okay? So we're just going to talk about decluttering like a princess, okay? That's our theme for the month. And I'll let you know about a conversation I had with Donna that actually prompted this theme. All right, so Donna, I guess she, not, she was never a hoarder. She wasn't a hoarder. But she lived with so much stuff that if there was anybody that was even slightly organized walking into her home, they would think she was. And she, you know, completely turned everything around. Everything is different now. But she's still Donna. You know, we're still us. We still are who we are. And we're not going to change who we are. And that's why it continues to be that we need these, you know, feel-good prompts and the, the um, anti-side tracking devices and other things that we use so that we actually get the work done because our personalities are still the same. You know, our, um, our tendencies, I guess, they're still the same. We still are who we are. So she, it was, it was not the easiest thing for her to let go of her big things, but she had to because she was renovating and everything wasn't going to work. She was a, she is a designer and she would, go to auctions and just buy things. And you know how that could go, right? It turned out to be that her home looked more like a storage unit for nice eclectic things because she constantly was picking up things. Most of them would be in the same taste, but not necessarily the same color scheme because she wasn't only thinking of herself, she was thinking of clients. So she would go to auctions and she would pick up things. So, so in some parts of her house, she would have paintings, beautiful paintings lined up. That happens to be one of them, the cows there. <laughs> That's a print, not a painting. But um, you know, she would have paintings lined up, just like standing up on the floor, leaned up upon each other, you know, a, a lot of them. Um, she had these two wardrobes that she absolutely loved and she bought them with her husband who happened to pass away so he was now her late husband and he loved them too and so there she was with these things that 
she loved but did not work in her home anymore. So some of them she used, but they really didn't work anymore, like the wardrobe, other things she just had almost like a collection, you know, like a, a, a sideboard in the dining room with just stuff on it, just lovely things with cobwebs and all of that that accumulate on things that you can't use. And so she did let go of a lot of things. And, you know, it was easier than what she's going through right now. And because she kept, all of the big things had to go, obviously, because, you know, she had men coming in and working. She had renovations done. She had the floors done. Um, she wanted the house to be a specific way. She had a vision for it. We wrote a vision. We read the vision every day when we were working together. And um, now she's in the position where she's filling up her kitchen. You know, she has had only the real essentials in the kitchen and it's been working for her just fine but she had other things that are in the garage her garage is a uh like a, it's a finished garage it could be an office you know like that kind of thing you know it has a desk in there has bookshelves has a little kitchenette type thing no bathroom but you know so but it's a very working um, working garage that she could use as valuable real estate really for herself but it had a lot of stuff in it because that's where she kept that's where she put the things like extra dishes extra pots um you know just things that when she got everything out of the kitchen so she only brought into the kitchen what she could get and it was working for a while and she just didn't care there were other things to care about so it's been a little while now that she had things brought in from the garage and she's been going through them a little at a time and now she's like you know how we could be like we could really allow a lot of mess around us without realizing it you know us as in the sidetrack type people that we are that she's like wait this stuff has been around way too long way too long i have to i've got to get so she called a um a cleaner and she had somebody come in to give her a price on helping her to take everything out of the cabinets because she wants to what she has in there now because she wants to put um you know whatever that stuff is on the bottom first like contact paper or whatever on the bottom put everything back in but we organize it and here's the caveat the things that she had in the boxes that she hadn't let um emptied to put in there but there are actually four sets of china four one of them she, she almost was like a, a china order i guess she had and this is where this came in she has a lovely closet in the dining room that the builders put a door on that's glass and paned that makes it look like a china closet. And it's got shelves in there, so it's great. So her first idea was to put her china in there. She has it in those um, zippered, you know, um, zippered, like pleated things, not pleated, quilted, quilted things, you know, it's like zippered and quilted, she has a china in that. So she was thinking, I'll store the china in there and make it look nice. And then she's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. It'll just look like stored china, you know, stored dishware. And she has some things that she's emptying out that are like lovely pieces. Like she has some pottery and um, um, Asian type art that she wants to display in there. So she designed her kitchen so that she's got tons of cabinet space and whatnot. So she thought, I'll keep it all in there. And we were talking. And I was like, would a princess keep four sets of china? And one set that I know of, because I lived with her for a while, we, I was a roommate, um, is there's many things that are chipped. There's, you know, some cups that are chipped, some and I know because I saw them. And personally, you get rid of what's broken. Get rid of it. Something that you want to do as the princess that you are is either let go of things that are broken or don't allow yourself to have things that you covet so much that you won't let go of, even if it's broken. Me personally, after all these years of the decluttering, the downsizing, the change in life that I've had with, you know, I had a four bedroom house. I had what everybody thinks you're supposed to have, you know, the china closet, the platters, the entertainment things, all of, all of that kind of stuff. And let go of it, downsize to a one bedroom apartment, like oh, I can't have all of that stuff. I had to adjust my identity, actually. My identity of who I was was wrapped up in my stuff. So at this point in my life, and I think everybody personally, I really do think everybody should get to this point 
that they don't own anything that if it broke or they had to get rid of that they would care about. And if you can't do that in your mind, then stop buying things that you're going to care about if it breaks or if you need to get rid of it. So if I, I just recently um, had to buy wine glasses and I wanted to get the kind without the stem. I went to the dollar store. Now, don't do they have lovely glassware in places that are that's lovely? Yeah, they do. Do I want to care about that stuff? I don't. And I also don't want to have the price tag that's attached to that stuff. Why? Why? It's 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 really brainwashing is what it is. We don't have to, you know, keep up with the Joneses. And when all is said and done, looks the same anyway looks the same. So if I break one of those wine glasses, I break one of those wine glasses. Now there was a time that I had lovely stemware. I think I have two left. I had lovely stemware. I got rid of everything except for six um, wine glasses. I like just donated the, the others, you know, because I had the whole shebang, you know, the dessert goblets, the water, go all of it. I got rid of everything except for six, um, six wine glasses and six shot glasses. I kept those. And I think I've got two left and I don't know why that is or how that happened. I really don't. I know I, I donated the, the, um, the shot glasses because I never used them. I realized I'm never using these. I'm not going to pack them up and move them again. I'm done. So, but I love them etched, beautiful, beautiful. Remind me of my mother's when I was a little girl. And so I don't know how it happened. I, I remember when one of them broke and I started to care, but it had been such a long time that I realized that the stuff is just stuff and how I knew how that stuff had kept me down and made me emotionally a wreck for too long because I had to let go of it that I, I'm, who cares? Who freaking cares? So now I know me and yes, I might buy something that is lovely and I love, 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 and maybe it does have a higher price tag, but I also know that I am not going to care about getting rid of it or if it breaks. And here's the thing, what I started out with, chipped anything, it's garbage. If you were a princess, would you be drinking out of a chipped mug? There's another thing about that, just like the, um, the, the closet I was talking about with all of those clothes in it that were either outdated or not worn anymore, there's like this feng shui thing attached. And if you don't believe in the whole feng shui thing, it's not like a belief. If you don't have that, if you don't even want to go there, just logically, you can see that there is definitely something attached to having something in your home around you that you don't use, don't love, or is, or you do use and is broken. There's something attached to that that seeps into how you think, how you feel, how you move ahead in life how you carry yourself and it is felt around you. It is felt by everyone. So, all right, so we got the 30 minutes done. All right, so if you want to report, if you need a little break and you want to report, I definitely need a drink of water. If you want to get a drink of water, if you want to come in and report, tell me how you're doing or you just want to keep going, you know that 30 minutes has been up on the clock. I'm gonna set the timer for another 30 minutes, okay. Get yourself your drink of water, whatever it is. Please make sure you drink water. It's so important to stay hydrated. Okay, so we were talking about chip things. Yes, all right. So let me see if I could find that text because Donna texted me and because she was saying that she doesn't have as much, um, they really weren't chipped or something like that. And I said, no, they, they were. They were chipped. They were definitely chipped. Um, it might be in a private message on Facebook. Let me see. Because I'll just read you her, her list. She said, okay, so I have undamaged, undamaged, because there's one set that she uses every day and she really likes them. And she actually has uh, place placemats that go beautifully with them. So I said, so you're going to revolve everything around these placemats, get rid of the placemats, get different placemats. They're broken. And you've seen, you've gotten your money's worth out of them. You've used them. We should never be possessed by our things. We possess our things. We possess them. They don't possess us. And if you are holding on to something and having trouble letting go of it, then it is possessing you. Who wants to live that way? Life is way too freaking short. 
Okay, so she said, so I have undamaged seven dinner plates, two lunch plates, seven salad soup bowls, eight teacups, five teacups, oh, five teacup saucers, and damaged is one dinner plate, five lunch plates, two salad bowls, one teacup and saucer. And so she showed me the picture of them. Let me see here. You could see, can you see it? That is the design. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's hard to see, I guess. There you go. It's lovely, right? It's lovely. Oh, there, I guess. Okay. It's, it's lovely. If that's what you like, don't ever do that to yourself. Don't ever get something that from now on you're stuck with it for the rest of your life because you like it. Do you see how many of those things are broken? Do you really? Um, five lunch plates are broken. Now, if you never use the lunch plates, say say you have you have two lunch plates, two dinner plates, two teacups, two saucers that are all not broken. Get rid of the other ones and use those two. If if it's if it's just you and that's all you ever use anyway, then that's fine. But really, you know that's not going to be fine. You know it's not. I've lived that way where I had only a few because I had this like minimal mindset where I was like, like I'm not going to have more than I need. I'm going to just get four or something like that. And it really does get old, especially if you have a dishwasher because you rinse it, you put it in the dishwasher, and then the next day you rinse it and you put it in the dishwasher, and now you want to use another one. If you only have two of them, you have to wash them again. I like to have a lot of forks, a lot of spoons, a lot of glasses, put them in the dishwasher, and then it's not like you're constantly having to wash things. If you have a dish drain, then it usually works just fine because you have to wash it right there, and then it is done. But most people do have dishwashers, so it just doesn't work that great. So, um, so that's what prompted this. And we talked about the whole princess thing. Would a princess really, really care about these broken things? And would she even ever allow herself to live her life among, amongst broken things or things she doesn't even like or things that somebody gave her that she wishes they never gave her? You know, here I am in this place and I'm decluttering and trying to get it well, you know, from, from what I understand in my heart and my life, this is, I live here now, all right? And I, I'm really thankful that I had this experience because when you live, have lived in a way that is streamlined and is minimal and is easy to be taken care of, you forget the pain and the, and the, um, the, the effect that having too much does to your life and here's the thing no matter how much i cleaned up the surface nothing was cleaned up and as i was decluttering you know as i went you know the whole thing doing it just like everybody else does it was layer upon layer upon i would get through one section and think i was good and then it'd be another section and it's almost like a a jack-in-the-box each and every time you do it, even with the decluttering supplies in tow. Why is that? The, it, you know, you, you say, well, why? I, you know, you have it. Because there's energy connected to all of this overgrown, overused crap. A lot of times, the things that we hold on to, that we think is so great, when it comes down to it, we wouldn't even give it away. So there's a lot of energy connected to that stuff not to mention dirt because if you keep stuff in a way long enough without paying attention to it 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 degrades it gets bugs cobwebs dust mold like all kinds of ick if you don't regularly take care of what it is that you have so even when you have storage even when you have decluttered a room and cleaned up a room, it isn't going to stay that way unless you regularly take care of it. You ever see the old movies where, you know, like the, the person that owned the estate, well, like say with uh, in Pride and Prejudice, right? Something like a movie like that. They would live in these beautiful homes in the country in the summer. And then in the winter, they would go to the, to the, to the city. And when it was time for them to leave, the servants would cover everything with sheets, they would 
you know, they would prepare the home to be empty. Why? Because if you don't, the things will be ruined. The house that I'm in right now, it had been renovated in a big way. Like it had, there, it kind of looked like a crack house. It was so, um, it was so let go when it was first bought, when it was first purchased. It was a, a foreclosure. It had been empty for a long time. It looked like people didn't care about it for a long time. So it was really crap. So they had somebody come in and repaint, re um, fix. Some some walls were re sheet rocked. Some walls were um, just fixed. You know, like a plaster. You know, replastered and that kind of thing. And it was lovely. I could show you some before and after pictures. But guess what? After about three years of not being cared for, some of those spaces have to be redone because not taking care of something, just leaving it and letting it go, it ruins it. Things that, things that you ever see those houses? You ever see some of these houses? They're on, you know, somebody just abandoned a house. And so there it is one year, two year, three year, nothing's happened. You know, nobody's damaged it or anything like that. But you look at this house and it's totally falling apart. That's just, that's just the way it is. There's gravity, there's the elements, things have to be taken care of. So if you have things in a room and you love everything in there and you're keeping it, you still have to go in there and empty the closets, wipe things down, shake things out, put them back. Even if, because I really do believe that every time you go into a zone and declutter it, you do let go of things, even though you thought you've you know decluttered everything in there. It's going to happen. It happens every time. It really does. So, but even if you don't, even if when you get in there and everything comes out and everything goes back, that's how it stays nice. It has to be done. So you have now these things that well, it's all right. So what if I don't use them? It's okay. It's in that space. It degrades. It gives off something. So there's that. All right, so we have 19 minutes left on this 30 minutes. I'm going to look at comments. And if you have any questions, I would love for you to ask them, okay? Let me know how you're doing as well. Let me see. Um, Paula said she came back and reported, doing good, taking a break for water and rest a few to keep going. All right, great. Let me know if you went got back to it. Barbara said, I've been working on my dresser that has been a mess for the past several years. The challenge is to clear it off. The homes for most of those items are places that need decluttering too, like a drawer, for example. With such a small house, I can't just clean off the top of a dresser and put it in a box because then that box will be clutter on my floor. Let it be clutter on your floor. This is the thing. When you have a mess, even when we are decluttering in a way that keeps things at bay and doesn't like make more of a mess than we took out there is going to be a chunk of space and time when things suck that's the that's just the nature of the beast you know like think of it as anybody that goes in for surgery you know it it starts out not so good it is, you know, there's something that needs to be fixed. Well, there's going to be stitches after after it's done. And before that, there's going to be body parts and organs out of the body, blood every place. It's good. It's a mess. It's mess. But it's necessary. It's necessary. If that specific surgery had to happen, it's necessary. That had to happen. Then it gets cleaned up. And that's the way you got to think of this is what happens. This is what happens. I allowed, you know, first we have to take responsibility, right? I allowed this to happen. It isn't because my place is too small. Remember the, the no excuse rule? It's not because my place is too small. It's not because I have no closets. It's not because my place is too big. We have to adjust to what we have or get bigger. That, there's, there's no, and there's no, um, no compromise there. Or you could just live with too much stuff, you know, but you're here. So I know you don't want to. So that's what you really, that is what you have to do. If you have, if you have a dresser, actually, I just got done talking to Donna about, not Donna, um, Debbie about this, because Debbie is also a client of mine, a uh, one-on-one -on -one person. And so we were, you know, talking about what's going on because her brother had just gone into the hospital. He had an emergency 
and I believe he's in rehab now. But in the meantime, you know, she had been working with me for a while. So thank God there was a lot of that underway. But she was never in his room. And she needed to get into his room because he needed to come home and he needed to be in a different bed. He needs to be in a bed that was like an adjustable bed. And she that it hadn't been done in such, such a long time. And it was such a mess. And it, she said, all right, well, this is the opportunity. I'm going to do his room. And then it moved on to, well, if I'm going to put rugs down, a rug down in his room, because she decided on a wall-to-wall -wall carpet because she knows that she felt that at their age, she's a little over 70 and her brother's a little older than her. She just felt that she didn't want to put laminate on the floor or what do they call them? You know, plank flooring. She didn't want to do that because she knew that she would want to put an area rug down because she wanted rug under her, under the, his feet, under their feet. And she was concerned that a lot of people it's, it's known. She said that a lot of people and elderly end up falling over the rugs at, you know, um, area rugs. So she didn't want to do that. So she wall to wall carpeted his room. And then she said, well, I'm going to paint the room. And room really needs to be painted, so let's do that. And then when I'd been working with her, I'm like, ah, oh, Debbie, do your room. Just do your room. Because she was going to get, order two more carpets for her, her, her room that she sleeps with her sister. Her and her sleeper sister are in the same room. Her and her, her brother and sister live together in a home, in a house. And she sleeps with, with her sister but there is a bedroom that's hers but it's got so much stuff in it she isn't in there and so she's been working on getting into that room i said make this be what forces you to do it just do it because she was going to order the two rugs and have them in the garage i'm like no that's just another thing that's going to be looming over your head we have to know how we are we can't say well i just won't be that way well you know what stop trying to like swim upstream you know we're, we're not salmon we have to go with the flow. So I said, that is a mistake. You don't want to do that. Just get the rooms done. You can do this. She was working on her room. So that was really good. A lot of that was done. But what did she have to do to get this done? And now she just boxed up the whole shit. I've done this before. It works. It isn't the way that we want to do it. It's not the optimum way to do it. But if you have to do it, it totally works. So you can do this. You can take every single freaking thing on that dresser. Probably everything on that dresser will fit in an apple box. If not, two. Put all this, everything in an apple box. Put it aside in that room. When you declutter, you declutter that, that box. What The drawer that you're talking about, that has to go, that, that some things have to go in, declutter that drawer. As you go through things, put things away. Sometimes it's the casualty of war. It's the casualty of clutter. But we're doing it as it's like controlled stash and dash, not stash and dash. Stash and dash, we all know about. We know what that's about. We've done it. It's it's a calamity. It sucks. This is controlled stash and dash. This is stash and dash where we are in control. So, yeah, it might really suck that you have a small house and you're going to have these stinking boxes stacked up. For one thing, if you get apple boxes, they stack beautifully. And for another thing, if you literally work on your zones, because whatever, whenever you're in that zone, that's when you're working on those boxes. So if you really are working on those zones and you're putting in that time, it's going to be like that. I did an entire, it's, I mean, it was only 400 square feet, to be fair. But now this is probably 1,500 square feet, probably, like maybe more. And um, yeah, it's not taking as long as anybody thinks it would. And let me tell you, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And there's more to it than that that's here because there's renovation that has to be done. But it's what's going on is the same thing like we're talking about. I wanna live in a decent space and there isn't, it isn't available to declutter everything appropriately because of so much stuff other places and work that has to be done like in floors in closets that kind of thing so it's boxed up boxed up put aside it, the whole the whole living room and kitchen is totally decluttered now let me tell you though let me tell you layer upon layer upon layer upon layer container boxes drawers under things cubbies tops of things I can't even. I can't even. But has it been 30 days? 
in 30 days. That includes regrouting a kitchen and putting plank flooring down. And we did it ourselves. Not anybody coming in to do it. And painting the kitchen. I did that, painting the kitchen. So 30 days. I, and it's not like I don't have anything to do. Let me tell you, I've got plenty to do other than. But I didn't kill myself. I paced myself. I lived with, oh my God, around me because there is no other way. Like what you were saying a minute ago when you said, um, with such a small house, I just can't clean off the top of the dresser and put it in a box because then the box will be clutter on my floor. I have four rooms in an old house that has no closets. Does this make sense? It has to. It has to make sense because that's the way it has to be because you have no choice. You just keep working on it. You know the end result. Just think of it like you're a surgeon, really. You know, like, well, I'm going to be making a big mess here, but this is necessary because otherwise this patient will die. Will die. In this case, no, you're not going to die, but you're going to lose your life because all of your time is going to be spent on doing this. That's why Debbie is my client because she's over 70. And after time goes by, people aren't around anymore. And she had for many years said, yeah, I'm going to spend time with so-and-so, but as soon as I get this done, yes, I'm going to go and visit what's her face. But as soon as this gets done, yes, I'm going to go see my dear aunt. But as soon as this gets done, then the so-and-so passed away. The dear aunt passed away. She's like, holy mackerel. If I don't get this underway, everything that matters to me, I'm not going to be able to do. And then what will I be left with? A, a lot of regret in my heart, heartache because of that, and shit that I don't even care about. A lot of this stuff, and I know you can relate, a lot of this stuff didn't even belong to her. It was things that was her father's, plumbing supplies even, but they're good. He was a plumber. He bought all of these things. They're all really good. Give them to a plumber. Get rid of them. Put yourself on the scale. Put your stuff on the, on, on the other side of the scale. You have to be more important than that stuff. When all is said and done, I'm telling you, Donna, it's going to attest to this. She doesn't care. In the beginning, it was tough, and I can attest to it too. We don't care anymore. Now, she has to adjust. And I'm not saying that you're not going to have to adjust. You will. And each and every time, Dunning-Kruger, go and watch that again. It's the goal-getting workshop. Watch that again, how in each stage, you hit another plateau. And you're going to feel like, oh, this sucks. But boy, it's so much better than it was before. It's normal. It's normal to hit rough spots. It's normal to crash. It's normal to make mistakes. It's normal to fall down. We just want to keep going. And as we keep going, it gets easier and easier and easier until we're on what they call a slope of enlightenment. And then it's all, it's easy. But we have to get to the point where it makes it easy. And it doesn't take a year. It doesn't take forever. You just have to be consistent. Because if we start and we stop and we start again and we stop and we start again and we stop, we, we never got past go. You know, you know what I mean? Like we're, on, we're in Candyland, say, so you're playing Candyland, right? And you start and you stop. And you start, and then it says, go back two spaces. There you go. So it feels like we've been going on forever, but in reality, we've never kept going. So that's what you want to do. Just keep going. I promise you. Remember, we talked about faith and believing. You don't have to believe it, but you do have to have faith. right? You don't have to believe that this really is going to get easier. This really is going to get better. And I really am not going to give a crap about this stuff after a while. But maybe you don't believe it. But you have faith in what I say, because I've been there and done that, but not only with myself, but with so many others, that you could do it on faith. And as you move ahead on faith, and you do it, because that's what it is, to do something on faith, you actually do it. Before you know it, you believe it. And then it gets easy. All right, I'm going to look at the timer. We have five minutes left, so I hope you're moving along. Okay, so Barbara said, would it make sense to declutter the home first, meaning work on the drawers first um it really depends on you starting from the inside out is really smart it's very very smart because now you don't have things that are going to be a jack-in-the-box if you look for something it's not going to make more of a mess and you're really getting rid of because it's really important like i said layer upon layer upon layer upon layer it's really important to get rid of the stuff you don't need want use and love that is shoved crammed or just stuffed somewhere real important 
Also, freeze up that space for the things to go in. Yes. You need to be very diligent and keep going with it. It'll be, it'll be just fine to do it from the inside out. It was what was recommended from the very beginning. The only reason that later on I said you can do it both ways is because some people really desperately needed to feel better in that area. They needed to feel better in that space. But if you don't keep going, that space will just constantly be a ball of clutter that just gets cleaned up every so often. That's all that it'll be. So if, if you're the per kind of person that has to feel good, I need to feel good, then absolutely, you can take everything off the, the top, do everything that you can with what you can, anything that goes in another room in the house, even if it doesn't have a place in that room, who cares, just put it in there. If it has to go in that room and it doesn't have a place for it, put it in a box. You, that, that has to go somewhere when you have a place for it in that room and you just keep going on the dresser like that so that the dresser or whatever surface is cleaned up. Then you could go in that box or most likely you would have to go inside things because that box obviously is filled with things because you didn't have a place to put them in that room. Sometimes you just need to buy something or shop at home first. See what you have at home. Like maybe you need a shelf. You know, maybe you need another, maybe you need to raise the bar in your closet and put another bar below it so that you could have two tiers in there. You know, there's, maybe you need a basket. Maybe you need a, a end table or something, you know. Sometimes you just need something else, but sometimes you just need to empty out stuff that you never use in those drawers. What do they say? We use the first layer of clothing in our drawers because we don't, we don't wear anything that's underneath that. So I don't even have a first layer. My first layer is my first layer and my only layer. So I hope that helped, Barbara. Kathy, my house is so much better. I really appreciate all your wisdom. Yes, and I hope that by me saying this, it does isn't bringing you in a position where you feel like you haven't progressed. I know you have, but like I said with Donna, you know, we all have issues after 30 something years of doing what I do. My son will be 35 and that's how long I've been doing it before I was pregnant with him. 1989, he'll be 35. So even after 35 years, I've got moments and I have places, you know, we just adjust and we do. It doesn't mean that what I've done up until now hasn't been amazing. Yeah, it has. But so it's not what I'm saying is we're not, I'm not negating any of your success. So thank you so much for saying that. All right. Paula said, hubby's retired and home. Oh, I know that could be so hard, right? And in my way, we live in a fifth wheel. We live in a fifth wheel, so there's no place for him to go. Most of the time he helps me, but today he's making phone calls and sitting in the zone I'm working on. It's all good. He's important. Yes, he is. And you know what you could do? You could just adjust. That's one of the beautiful things about this system is that you can make a decision that you're just going to switch the zone for the week. You could just say, you know what, I'm just going to do next week's. Although this is the first week, so I'm going to put stop because we're 30 minutes in. So I'm going to set. So you work for an hour. All right. I'm going to set a timer for five minutes and that then we're going to close out. And um, so if you have any closing thoughts or anything like that, you know, um, type them in. If if you are typing something, though, let me know that you are so I don't close out while you're trying to tell me something. You could always unmute. All right. Um, did well, finished routine, then worked on the front porch in the entranceway. Oh, excellent. All right. If um, it is challenging when you have somebody home all day, it's so different. It really, I know it is. But, you know, we adjust. And sometimes in that case, doing a family work day really helps where that's concerned because then you don't really have to think about it. Just look, we're or, or a once over day. The once over day is done together. You know, that's always a plus. So I have this timer on. We got a minute and 43 seconds left. And then I'll close out and we'll meet up again tomorrow. And we'll continue on with de-junking is the topic for the week. But our focus is in a different level. And I think what I'll do tomorrow is I'll talk about a book that um, I have it in a Kindle. It's called Outrageous Openness. And there's a section in there that is really good when it comes to just like the, the realization of what it's like when you hold on to things that you shouldn't have anymore and what what a ripple effect it has on your life. Okay, so I'll sign out now. Thanks so much for being with me and I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? Mwah.
Thanks for being with me. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. This really helps. You notice that I never have advertisements on my videos. So you will help me to keep it that way and show me your appreciation by just clicking like, subscribing, sharing, and leaving a comment. Any of those will do. All right. Bye. <laughs> you got bugs called the bug eye. You cook bacon apple pie. If you show your picture, tear, clean or clean my underwear. These are the things we do. The house is a mess with all the junk. Your sink's clogged up with dinner time gunk. You pick up the phone and call the rotor rooter to make it all work. You call the tidy tutor. Pretty good, uh -huh. don't you?